Fellow parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply grateful to the Interparliamentary Union and the Parliament of Indonesia for this unique opportunity to share our experiences on national climate actions and exchange insights on strengthening the parliamentary response to climate change, particularly in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and accelerating the green transition. The need for collective action to tackle climate change has never been more urgent. In our interconnected world, no one can escape the impact of climate change. Whether events in one part of the world will impact economies and societies elsewhere. Mass migration of climate refugees and conflict over climate-threatened natural resources weaken global security. The integration and interdependence in today's globalized world magnifies the effect of climate disasters and adverse weather events and extends it far beyond national boundaries. Our response to climate change must be a global response. To realize the 2016 Paris Agreement on Climate Change and galvanize the investments required, all stakeholders at the national, regional, and global levels must engage one another, cement partnerships, and collaborate climate actions. Towards this end, the Philippine government is pushing for high ambition in reducing carbon emission and keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius survival threshold. In the 26 UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties, or COP26 in 2021, the Philippines committed in its nationally determined contributions to reduce emissions by 75% below business as usual by 2030, which is the highest among the Southeast Asian countries. The Philippine Congress has also passed several landmark laws in the recent past, such as Republic Act No. 9729, which established the Climate Change Commission of the Philippines, mandated with the task of formulating strategies on mitigating GHG and other anthropogenic causes of climate change, and Republic Act Number no. 10174, which established the People's Survival Fund to provide long-term financing to enable the government to effectively address the problem of climate change. These laws support the vital points of climate advocacy, namely climate justice, the urgency of climate action, system change, protecting environmental defenders, and promoting youth collective action. The Philippine government continuously supports and provides the needed legislative mechanisms and budgetary resources to ensure effective climate change laws are in place and that funding is adequate to support climate action. The Philippines NDC reflects a whole of government and society approach as it fosters a more inclusive and consultative process with various stakeholders towards a low carbon and climate resilient development path. Cognizant of the climate emergency, we at the House of Representatives firmly support the NDC by aligning some items in the national budget with decarbonization ambitions. While these steps are not yet comprehensive, we will endeavor to provide the needed climate finance and promote coherent climate actions in the legislative agenda to ensure that these goals will be met. Fellow parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, in the 144th IPU meeting, we will have an opportunity to take stock of the gains achieved in the past years and to look ahead on how to sustain the relevance of interregional relations in pushing for credible climate actions. As we move forward to a post-pandemic era, the IPU must recognize that the path to greater prosperity is by increasing interregional cooperation and interdependence. Let me conclude this statement by conveying our high appreciation and gratitude to the Parliament of Indonesia for the generous preparations for this meeting as well as for ensuring a rich exchange of ideas among the delegates. We wish you a successful and productive assembly and most of all, a safe, stable and prosperous IPU community. Thank you.